Saturday Night Theatre. We present The Murder of Walter Raleigh by Ian Cullen, with Bernard Archard as Sir Walter. The Murder of Walter Raleigh. Geez, you, it's hot. Aye. The sun not full up yet. How far now to the mine, Captain? Once we pass the tome, a dozen miles. Keep them still, Master Watt. The town's close by. Right, Captain. Quiet! Keep the animals still. Glad the colonists down on us. Quiet there! Who'd want to live in a hellhole like this? Spaniards are used to hell, mister. It's their natural home. I wish Sir Walter were here. And I. See, I'll lead a score of ships and never think to worry. But here, on land, with the sea out of smelling, I need to be led. All quiet, Captain. Will there really be gold at your father's mine, Master Watt? Aye, if my father says it. There's gold enough for the taking if the Spaniards haven't found the mine. Ambush! Take cover! My men! Dolly! Spanish militia! A trap! Follow me, lads! What? Come back! Come on, my heart! Follow him! English run! Attack! I should have gone with them. Is there, is there no news? Just the guns, Sir Walter. Uh, send Will Cecil to me. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, God. Help me to get through this day. The Spaniards are broken, Captain. Master what? Dead, sir. He died on the first charge with a dozen pike wounds. Burn Santome to the ground. Leave only the church. We'll bury him at the altar. Right, Captain. Captain James, where are you, Captain? Here. Well? We found these papers, sir, in the town hall. Yes, yes. The lieutenant said to find you at once, sir. Here, give them to me. You have your orders? Yes, sir. I'll report to Sir Walter. God help me. You must rest, sir. You've been very ill. Rest? While my men are dying? Who's that? Someone coming from the forest. Wounded. It's Keynes. Has he help? Yes, sir. Bring him straight to me. Yes, sir. He's Captain Keynes, Master Cecil. And wounded. Keynes. For the Lord's sake, what's happened? It was a trap, Master Cecil. They were waiting near the gold mine. Hundreds of them. And with cannon. But how did they get... We were ambushed. Without warning. Fourteen men fell at the first assault. We had but a few muskets. What can pike men do against cannon? And my son, Captain. Sir Walter, you should be a bear. Is my son safe? Is what dead, Captain? He was the first to fall. How did he die? A hero's death, sir. Single-handed, he broke the Spanish line. But before the Spaniards fled, a hundred of our Englishmen lay murdered. What can I say to my wife? Oh, my poor Bess. We chased them back to St. Tom. And with their own cannon, captured their town. Did you continue to the mine? Well, that was my intention, sir, but one of the soldiers was in the governor's house. Uh, looting? They were angry, sir, and out of my control. He, he found these papers. What papers? The inventory of your fleet, which you drew up yourself and gave to Lord Cecil. And dispatches from Gondomar to the Spanish king written before we sailed. 
the complete plan of our voyage, our route and watering places, the exact location of your gold mine and every detail of our strength. Let me see. I was near despair of the loss of so many men and Master Watt. The Spaniards were rallying to attack again. We had little hope to regain the ships. No hope, nor point in continuing to the mine. Then what did you do, Captain? I was angry, sir, and betrayed. What did you do? We sacked the town, except only the church where I buried young Watt at the altar. We, we stole all their tobacco stores. Why did you break orders, Captain? You were told to avoid St. Tolman conflict at any cost. But you immediately engaged in a pitch battle, looting and burning Spanish property. You returned without one ounce of gold and with a useless cargo of tobacco. If I land at Plymouth with tobacco, the king will have my head. You tell me that my son is dead. Well, I'd rather lose a hundred sons than be accused of having escaped from the tower by a lie. The gold mine is there! By your traitorous actions, you had made your venture desperate, but you had no cause save cowardice to abandon it. You cannot be accused when you show those papers. You were betrayed. By you, Captain. Can I accuse the king? My wounds need care, sir. Oh, get away and bind them, Captain. I hope that I can yet give you cause to love me, sir. You will give marvellous satisfaction to my enemies. Help the captain there. Aye, aye, sir. Sir Walter, will you return to your cabin? I hopefully to die. Oh, would I'd never left the safety of the tower. Never heard of this accursed expedition. Why did you come, sir? It was Henry's wish. He engineered the voyage to keep me out of prison. Prince Henry? My only friend at court. He brought the news of my release. My twelfth year in the tower. We were playing chess, the prince and I, with what advising. The prince played badly, but then he was impatient with his news. There now, my prince. You have him. Where? How? The queen's move. There? Of course. Check, father. Hmm. You were ever a poor counsellor, what? Check, my prince, and meet. <laughs> <laughs> you are too cunning, Sir Walter. When I am king, I shall make you captain of my fleet and send you far away where you can do no harm. Oh, a poor policy, my prince. Keep your honest simpletons at home. Send your knaves away. If that is true, Sir Walter, you speak against yourself. How's that? How's that? Your father has kept me mewed up in the tower these twelve years past. By my theory, that proves me honest. And simple. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty and simplicity keep me alive. That's all I ask. Is it really all? All that I dare hope for. You have our leave to hope for more. You will be free by Christmas. Free? By Christmas or before. I beg you not to jest, my prince. Oh, Sir Walter, you have so many friends and how they've worked to save you. And don't think you'll be kept idle. The Spaniards stir up trouble in the colonies while they sue for peace at home. Peace on what terms? Your head is the thing they seek most. Uh -huh. For twelve years my head's been banded like a ball in a cup. Yet it stays firmly set on my shoulders. And by God's grace will stay there forever now. I cannot believe the king will set me free. Believe it when my father sends for you, because he surely will. Well, well, Sir Walter Raleigh. It's good to see you in health. Your Majesty is too generous. Aye, well, that's as may be. Uh, my Lord Cecil here will get down to the business on hand. Thank you, sire. Walter. Some years ago, you claimed to have found a gold mine of fabulous wealth in the then English colony of Guyana. I did find it. Of course. Well, England needs that gold. The purse is empty. 
Will you undertake the journey? But Guyana is no longer an English colony. Alas, no. What would I command? Fourteen ships, eleven hundred men, already shipped and awaiting you in Plymouth. You may trade en route, but you must find the gold and return to England within two years. Uh, you understand, Raleigh, this is not an expedition against Spain. She is our ally now. Your Majesty, I am an old man. Nonsense! You're about ten years older than Cecil here. You're out of condition, that's all. Is there no one else? We wish you to lead the expedition, Sir Walter. None other. Will you serve the King? Forgive my doubt, sire. I'm overwhelmed by this sudden change in my fortunes. Good. Now to details. You must set down the details of your route, your landfalls and estimated dates of arrival at each. Also, the whereabouts of your gold mine. With a map, of course, and details of any inland expedition you may mount in the colonies. Will that be necessary or wise? For our eyes only, Walter. A precaution against misadventure. I understand, Robert. And you must undertake to further the peace with Spain. You'll appreciate that. If it is your wish, sire. Have you thought it, Father? I wished, Henry, I'm about it. It's not a mere whim, Raleigh. We command on pain of death to avoid any clash with Spanish forces by land or by sea. But if we are attacked... If you are attacked, it will be by a bunch of ignorant colonists not aware yet of our truce with Spain. You will not stand, but run. From Spaniards? Silence, sir. Your past mistress, Elizabeth Tudor, may have condoned your piracies, Raleigh, but I will have no part of such wickedness. Does this royal commission mean that I'm to be pardoned for my past offences, sire? This is not the time to discuss your pardon, Sir Walter. The king's mercy is not infinite. Be satisfied with what you have. Uh, what, what is it, Will? Oh, uh, I think I was dreaming. I'll find out, sir. Well, oh, it, 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 it's Captain Keynes, Master Cecil. He, he, out with it, man. He's, he's shot himself, sir. The first ball but wounded him, and so he fired again. Is he dead? Oh, he could never bear your anger, sir. And so leaves me alone to face the kings. Bury him ashore. We'll sail on the tide. I'll see to it, sir. You must rest. Rest. Dear father, oh, help me to die quickly. Oh, give me the courage to face best with the news of our son, what? Forgive my weakness and my anger. Take what to your heart, who died despising me. Help him to understand. I don't understand you, Father. Thirty-six of our men in clear sight, tied back to back. Why will you not rescue them? I must obey the King's commands in everything. Then let me take a shore party. Ten men will do. No. The Spaniards are seeking to provoke me into an attack. They were expecting us to water here, waiting. How long can our men stand it, sir? They'll go mad in that heat without shelter. Aye, Captain. But they won't find shelter until we sail. Give the orders. And leave them to the Spanish galleys. It's that or stay and watch them broiled alive in this damned heat. I cannot eat them without bloodshed. Give the order, Captain. Aye, aye, sir. Look. Look, Father. The Spaniards are out from the trees. They've seen us preparing to leave. Aye, we've cheated them of their real prey. What? You must believe that. Those men are not colonists. They're Marines. Landed there to await us, as at every other landfall. Father! They're killing our men! Butchering them! Oh, have mercy! We must turn back! It's too late! Not for vengeance! Father, turn back! I cannot! It would be a crime against the peace! King James' own book calls for an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth! Those butchers will have justice, I swear it! You will beg for justice as the king has begged for peace! Peace and justice must rule the world! They must! I wish I were commander here! I'd show the Spaniards justice. 
Then they would beg for peace like in Elizabeth's time. I'll not have that wretched woman dragged from her grave and hurled into my teeth. I wish she could be wigged to hurl into the teeth of Spain. Then they would know the line was alive again and we would be in safer state. <laughs> Sir? Uh, Sir Walter? Yes. Yes, Master Will. The tobacco is all loaded. Good. What is our destination, sir? Why, England, of course. Is that wise, sir? Will you be safe in England? I've no choice, Will. Turn pirate, sir. The men are willing. Revenge yourself and Watt and Captain Keynes and all those others. We can do it. And justify the king... Make myself a traitor? No, Will. No. My home is in England, despite the King of England being my enemy. Why does he hate you, Sir Walter? Ah, if I had hearkened to your father, I might have won his love. But I was a, a stubborn, proud man. I've often heard him say it. But what was his advice? He warned me of my danger. Urge me to make my peace with the new king. Then why didn't you? Oh, well, I'm an old man now, Will. I'm tired. When the queen died, I was in my prime. A hero, a courtier, wealthy. I was arrogant, vain, glorious, and I thought unassailable. Why should I pander to any man, even a king, whom I'd never wronged? I can't believe you were all those things. Well, fifteen years ago, they weren't vices, Will. All England, under Queen Bess, was arrogant, vain, <laughs> glorious, and unassailable. We feared nothing, not even the new king from Scotland. Your father was wary and gave good reasons. But at the time, no one listened to him, least of all me. I remember his answer when I laughed at him and said I wasn't afraid. But James is afraid, Walter. Afraid of all the men Elizabeth made great. He's a misshapen little man and a coward, but not a fool. Your fine looks, achievements and popularity will condemn you in his eyes as surely as they recommended you to Elizabeth. Nonsense, Robert. James is my new king and I look forward to meeting him, serving him. He'll soon realise his good fortune. He'll never believe you, Walter. Why, then the loss will be his own, not mine. Your pride will trip you, Walter. These Stuarts are foxes. But you are the chief fox, Robert. No Stuart will beat a Cecil. I am journeying to Bedick to meet James on his progress to London. I beg you to accompany me, Walter. If I must crawl to Berwick to gain his favour, I'll endure without it. He is already against you. If that's the case, then a journey to Guyana would be too brief for me to make my peace. Now you go, Robert, and sweeten him towards me. At least join us before we reach London. Perhaps. At Oxford. Safe journey, Robert. These people hate me, Cecil. They don't know you, sire. Where are we now? Approaching Oxford, sire. They're a hostile crowd. An English crowd. Naturally, sire. And they've been turned against me. You've plenty of guards. Of course, sire. There'll be assassins in that crowd, Cecil. I'm sure not, sire. You have nothing to fear. There, Your Majesty. Being a stranger to them, you were not at once identified. It's not their king they call for, Cecil. Sir Walter is most popular in these parts, sir. So it would appear. We'd stop the coach. Open the door, I if you think it's safe, or are we being met by murderers? Sir Walter Raleigh is as loyal a subject as your majesty will find in England. For what that's worth. Well, the door. Good morning, Robert. Your majesty, welcome to London. I'm not there yet. From Oxford, the whole route is lined with cheering subjects. 
Your journey will be but brief. Cheering for who, man? I hear more cries for Raleigh than for James. Your Majesty, may I present Sir Walter Raleigh, Captain of the Royal Guard. Raleigh, Raleigh. Aye, and Raleigh have I heard of you, man. And where was the captain of my guard at the border? Making London secure for you, sire. I wonder. And was it you bribed yon cheerers to humiliate me? If I have bribed them, sire, tis with my blood, spent freely for them over thirty years or more. Perhaps your majesty would have fared better had you fought for the English throne. How's that? What do you mean? Only that you might now know your friends from your enemies. I think I do, Raleigh. Then a fret for me. Drive on, Cecil. Very well, sire. I'll not have that man about me. He's a traitor. I assure your majesty. The man hates the Stuarts. He loved Elizabeth, sire, but that's a different matter. And what of you? Sire? Does Elizabeth hold your heart, Cecil? My duty and loyalty lies entirely with you, sire. Then do as you're bid. I'll not have that man captain of my guard. I'll not have him at court. You're to find proofs that will rid me of him. You understand me? Yes, sire. I want him dead. But I want it legal. I'll not have him made a martyr. See to it, Cecil. Soon. Enter. Sir Walter Raleigh, my lord, by appointment. Now, ah, come in, Walter. Come in. You sent for me, Robert? Yes. Yes, I did. It's always a pleasure when you can spare me a few moments. You've been kept busy dancing attendance on the new master, I take it. Don't be huffed, Walter. I'm not huffed, Cecil. I'm damnably insulted. So was the king by your efforts at Oxford. Then the more fool him. He has commanded me to dismiss you from your appointments at court. Oh, well, my captaincy? Especially your post as captain of the guard. But it's a sinecure, Robert. Granted me for life. By Elizabeth. Her life has ended. His Majesty requires a more active captain, someone he feels he can trust. <laughs> Another Scotsman, I suppose. His Majesty also commands that you be dismissed from the Privy Council and that you resign all military and naval commissions. Until he needs his defences again. The country is embarked on a policy of peace. You are already an embarrassment in our negotiations. So, the great days are over, are they, Robert? For you? I'm sorry, Walter. But your family will be delighted. Oh, why? You must leave London. You're not safe here any longer. Retire to Sherburn. Is that also a command? No, just sound advice. Even James, vindictive as he is towards you, may leave well alone if you're out of sight. So, I rot in the country. Oh, come now, it's not so bad. You love Sherburn. You always talked of retiring there. But not yet. I've years of service in me. Then serve your wife, serve your son... And serve yourself, for you will not serve James. Very well, Robert. This time I'll heed your warning. Good. And now to more cheery things. You'll have company on your journey. I've written to Lady Raleigh and begged her to give house room to my son, Will. The boy's under my feet here at present, and there's no fear of plague at Sherburn. Oh, that's splendid. He'll be company for young Walter. And I take it as a mark of your continuing affection that you choose us to house the boy. Trust me, Walter... I'll do what I can to soften the king. In the meantime, be happy at Sherburn. Oh, I wish I were a sorceress. <laughs> Why, Bess? I would enchant you and make you contented. Well, I am content. Oh, nonsense. You're in exile here at Sherborne, and I'm your jailer. Sherborne is my El Dorado. I love it here. Oh. Soon you'll be in favour again at court. They cannot do without you. They cannot, nor will not, do with me. The new king is frightened and jealous. Lord Cecil will soon calm him. Aye, uh, Cecil is a true friend. My only friend at court. 
<laughs> but much too busy about his own affairs to further mine. <laughs> Lord Copley and Lord Brooke have both confessed under persuasion to a treasonous alliance with Spain and to a plot to murder Your Majesty. These confessions are signed and witnessed and implicate the following. Lord Parham, Lord Brooksby, Lord Cobham, and the priests Watson and Clark. But not Raleigh. No, sir. These others are all minor men, mind dominated by that Devon sorcerer. They must accuse Raleigh. Lord Cobham is Raleigh's great friend. If he were to accuse Raleigh, it would carry weight. Then see to it. Stretch him until he snaps. He'll be needed at the trial, in good condition. What trial? Raleigh must have a public trial and be faced by his accuser. Will Cobham do that? We will find a way. With no strong witness against him, Raleigh will go free. Witness! The whole world knows that Raleigh hates me, mocks me. He's a traitor in thought, if not in deed. He cannot be condemned for his thoughts, sire. The people will not have it. Damned English care more for Raleigh than they do for their king. Is he in London yet? He will come. I've written to him most pleadingly. Yeah, you have great faith in him. Raleigh has many faults, sire, but he is loyal to his friends. Though not to his king, it would seem. Is Cobham arrested? Not yet, sire. Once the head is in the tower, the tail may wag more freely. Aye. Very wise. And uh, the deeds that Raleigh drew up to make Sherborne secure for his heirs, have you examined them? They appear to be in order, sire. There must be a fault. I am not a lawyer, sire. I have given the deeds to Sir Edward Cook. If there is a fault, I will trust him to find it. I must have Sherborne. The heirs of a traitor are not difficult to dispossess. Yeah, I want it legal, Cecil. No repercussions. Once Raleigh is in the tower, everything becomes possible. When, Cecil? How soon? A day or two. I sent a swift messenger. Who? Raleigh's old captain, Keems. They've not met for years. Raleigh will come. And you did go, sir. Don't you remember, Will? You were with us at Sherborne when the letters arrived. But you knew it was a trap. We suspected, Will. Bess was afraid. Well... I was afraid myself, but it was your father wrote. But why? Do you think he knew? Even he was afraid at that time. Of what? Your family were, and are, one of the most powerful and wealthy in the land. If your father lost James's trust, the wealth, the power, the great houses, your inheritance will, would all be lost with that trust. So you think my father betrayed you for that? At that time, no. But now, these papers will from St. Tome. They're in your father's own hand. Exact copies of the instructions of our voyage. How do you know it is my father's hand? Uh, look for yourself. Even the signature. He was confident of my death. Those letters were in Spain before we left Plymouth, Well, Even if these are not forgeries, sir, they cannot save you. If you go back to England. I have no choice but to try. If you succeed, my father is the traitor. And I will succeed. These papers will free me once they're made public. I'm confident. You were confident when you left Sherburne despite all pleading and went to London. Sixteen years ago. And like the king... I still did not know my friends from my enemies. Your father questioned me all day, in a friendly manner, but the clues were there for me, had my eyes been open. Markham, Brooke and these priests, I'll agree it's possible. But as for Cobham, you know as well as I do, Robert, the man's a fool, but he's no traitor. You've heard him yourself railing against the Stuarts. Indeed, you joined with him. But long ago, James was in Scotland. Queen Bess was alive. Decrying the Stuarts was not treason, but speculation. At that time, good politics. Brooke, Copley and these others moved from speculation to conspiracy. They admit traffic with Spain. For money. How could they hope to succeed? If traitors thought to be caught, there'd be none. They intended to succeed and kill the king. The king's afraid of his shadow. He is afraid of you. Is it true 
that he hopes for an alliance with Spain. We must have an alliance, Walter. These continuing wars have emptied the treasury. Trade with Europe and with the colonies is at a standstill. James wants peace and the rule of law, and intends to have it. By marrying Prince Henry after the Spanish Infanta. You're well informed. The man's mad, I tell you. Everyone knows that two religions will not lie side by side in one bed. It is your duty to support your king in all his hopes, not to deride and insult him. <laughs> Don't be stiff, Robert. I only share my opinions with my friends. Lord Cobham, we have letters from you urging Cobham to visit Spain. So? The war was over. We needed news of what the Spaniards were up to. It was not your place to seek that news. It was before James dismissed me from the Privy Council. The letters are undated. Then they may go back to the old Queen's time. There's no danger there. Then what of this? I quote Walter. As Walter is my friend, I will obey him. But his schemes confound me. I wish that he would leave me alone. Who wrote that? Cobham. To his brother. When? Again, no date. Conspirators are careful. Conspirators? What are you saying, Robert? Sir Walter Raleigh, I have been ordered to arrest you and hold you for trial on the charges of conspiracy to commit treason and treason. You cannot arrest me. You have no cause. The king has good cause for all his actions. You must learn that, Walter. Guard! Escort Sir Walter to Bodley House and detain him there. Your sword, Sam. Eh? If ever you did love me, Robert, which I cannot doubt, look to Bess and the boy for me. Keep them safe. I will do all I can. I am afraid now, Robert. Too late. Who is it this time? It's me, sir. George Harvey. Ah, welcome, George. My only friend. Without, alas, the power to help you. Uh, the news you bring is help enough, George. Oh, God knows it's mostly bad. But these last months, while they prepare their evidence with the cold and the damp and the endless interrogations, we should have gone mad without your gossip. <laughs> My father has consented that you shall have a fire, Sir Walter. Oh, God bless the Lord Lieutenant of the Tower. Then where is it, George? Bring it in. Bring it in. In here. Right there. I took the liberty of bringing it myself. Uh, uh, oh. oh, you're a good friend, George. Oh, oh, it would suit the King admirably if I were to die here, ague, you, or the plague. Now, what news? Rumour has it that the king has given Sherborne to young Robbie Carr. They say that his men are already plundering the estate. Oh, Bess, keep safe. What else? Sir Edward Cook is here again today. Uh, I know. Each time they question me, they're amazed that I give nothing away. <sighs> Cook insists that I'm calling on Satan to give me cunning. When he is himself about the devil's work. Still... Those law books you brought me here, comforting. I know that I have done nothing that can be construed as treason. Thank you for them. Oh, it's my duty, sir. Have you any other news? Lord Cobham has been shown the rack again, but will not amend his confession to accuse you. He should never have confessed. The law books all agree that an accused man should keep his own counsel until faced in open court by his accusers. But a guilty man may expect some mercy if he admits his fault. <laughs> From James Stewart. <laughs> Lord Cecil and Sir Edward Cook. Ah, now we'll go through it all again. You know, George, only an Englishman would have the audacity to offer me a place in heaven if I'd confessed to a crime uncommitted. Ah, good day, Walter. Ah, Robert. Still in good spirits, Sir Walter? I count it a mortal sin to lose heart, Sir Edward. Then perhaps you will add that sin to your overburdened soul when I tell you that it has been decided, in view of your stubborn refusals to confess, that you must conduct your own defence. But I'm no lawyer. You are denied a defending officer. 
It states clearly in the common law that any man is entitled to a proper defence. Don't you see, sir? It's their one hope of a conviction. Be quiet, George. You know, Sir Edward, you are a monstrously ambitious man. When I see you, I'm reminded of the man I once was myself. Oh, you were ambitious for England. He's just greedy. Go, George. Good advice, Master Harvey. But... No, not another word. Oh, very well, sir. He's but a boy, Robert. Well, Sir Edward, your news does not make me despair. I have but one friend in England to whom I would entrust my defence. What friend is that? Myself. With you, my enemy, Robert. Who else could I trust? Lord Cobham has amended his confession and names you as his leader. That is a lie. True, Walter. He had confessed to a minor plot led by some priests and aimed at the king and his heirs, but now tells of a greater venture led by you and aimed at the state. There was no such plot. He swears it before God and his priest. Then he was more than shown the rack. Lord Cobham is in good health. This confession sprang voluntarily from a genuine repentance. He will retract. No, Walter, he hates you. He was led to believe that you had accused him, and when he heard that, he flew into one of his famous rages and denounced you. All that he said was taken down, and, still raging, Cobham signed it. Unorthodox, but effective. When he learns that he's been tricked, he will recant. He is to remain in solitary confinement under close guard until your trial is over. Then I will write and beg the truth. No one can communicate with Cobham until he's exposed you for the vile and filthy traitor that you are. Robert, help me. My powers are weakened by my love for you, Walter. Confess and trust in the king's mercy. Confess to what? Lack of judgment in my choice of friends. Too great a love for England. Too great a hate for Spain. Leave us, Sir Edward. I must be present at all interrogations of the prisoner. If you value your position, obey me. The king shall hear of this. Now, Walter, do you accuse me when your stubborn denials have cost me power that I could have used to save you? Oh, come, Robert, nothing can save me. I agree, your life is forfeit. But the king has made young Robbie Carr Duke of Rochester and seeks an estate for him. Sherborne is entailed and made over to my heirs. On my death it goes to what? Cook has found a flaw in the contract. Another trick, Robert? The king has not yet been told of the fault. Now, Cook is the king's man. Cook is his own man. And I have struck a bargain on your behalf. My head for Sherborne. <laughs> At last I know my own true worth. Your confession will buy Cook's silence about the fault. Robert, you are a fool or you take me to be one. The king will dispossess my heirs after I'm dead and a confession would justify his theft to the people. That's why the king must have my confession. I'll believe what you like. I'll not confess. I'll pray for Cobham to retract. Without him, you cannot bring me to trial. He will not retract. He would if he were told the truth, Robert. And betray the king. So, the truth would be treachery. Oh, Robert... Persuade James to see me. Perhaps I can move him to reason. He will never see you, and even if he did, it would achieve nothing. Your flattery and fine looks could ward off Elizabeth's anger, but this king has never loved you as she once did. He remembers that you had his beloved Essex killed. If you wish to please the king, confess. Confess, and your name will live after you. Refuse, die unrepentant, and you will be forgotten. Be advised, Walter. Make Cook your friend. With Cobham to witness against you, there will be no further delay in bringing you to trial. Think hard, Walter. Goodbye. Leave nothing, Harvey. I brought his supper, sir. Your supper, sir, Walter. Oh, thank you. George... Would you prefer to be the son of a confessed traitor and live, or would you prefer to die? I don't understand, sir. Would you prefer to be the widow of the most despised man in the land, or the widow of the poorest? 
I have found out where Lord Cobham is being held. Cobham? He's in the West Tower, heavily guarded. If I could but get to him, he, he, he would recant, I know it. Has he a window, George? Yes, sir. High up in the tower. Then if his door is blocked, I must reach in through his window and pluck at his conscience that way. Could you throw a letter in through that high window? I think so, sir, if it were weighted. Would you try? My old friends are all gone, and I must use my new ones. I can offer no reward, and would not ask it of you, but that others are in danger. Will you do it? Write your letter, sir. It'll reach Lord Cobham if I must climb the tower to do it. And did it reach Cobham? Oh, yes, well. George was a faithful messenger. And did Cobham retract? He did. I journeyed to Winchester with his letter against my heart, my armour. Winchester? Why Winchester? The king reasoned I'd have no friends at Winchester. <laughs> he needn't have bothered Will. I'd no friends anywhere. The journey proved that. To judge by that journey, I was the most hated man in England. Every hamlet and village turned out to jeer at me as I passed. They knew you were coming? Oh, yes. It was a rude shock for me, Will. I thought the people loved me. They were the worst hours of my life, and I paid the price of pride. What happened at Winchester? Oh, well, they were all there. Your father, Cook, Lord Chief Justice Popham, and the King up in his hidey-hole. What hidey-hole? A little secret room overlooking the courthouse with a peephole. Elizabeth had it built. I've watched many a poor wretch in the dock from that room myself. We thought it sport then. And the King was hiding there? With Robbie Carr for company. And, of course, the whole court, including the jury, knew it. What happened at the trial? Well, I waited to be called. Guarded, of course, while the jury was sworn in. I was quite confident. Armed with Cobham's retraction and my own innocence, I even thought I might win. Is everyone here who should be here, Sir Robert? Not yet, Popham. Sir Edward is with the King. Then we are proceeding with the case? Do you think we travelled from London to Winchester well, in order to dismiss the charges? Uh, Sergeant Heal, may we have order, please? Pray silence for the King's Lord Chief Justice. We are met today to hear the case of Crown against Sir Walter Raleigh. Shame! Bring in the prisoner, Sergeant Heal. Bring in the prisoner. <laughs> ah, Cook, I understood that you were with the King. My apologies, Lord Chief Justice. Until a moment ago, I was. I had feared that removing these proceedings to Winchester would rob us of a royal audience. But here comes the villain, really. Silence! 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 Are you Sir Walter Raleigh, late of Sherburn, and now by order of King James, lodged in the Tower of London? I am. And do you owe your allegiance to the Crown of England? I do. Sir Walter Raleigh, you stand before us on a most vile and horrible charge. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? With respect, my lord, I cannot plead until I have heard the charges. You know the charge. You are a traitor. Am I then convicted already? <laughs> Make your plea. My lord, I am no lawyer and am denied the use of one. But if you will not name me on a specific and legal charge, I must ask you to allow me to quit this place. All in good time. 
Do you see the jury? Yes, my lord. Will you accept them? Yes. You challenge none? I know my own innocence, and I hope them all to be honest and Christian men. Very well. Sergeant Heal will now read out the charges. Sir Walter Raleigh, you are here before this court to give answer to the following. First, that you have conspired with others to kill your king and raise rebellion in the land with the intent to change the religion of your country to Spanish popery and to subvert your government. <coughs> Second, you are charged with listening to Spanish brides. Are you guilty or not? Not guilty. Then Sir Edward Cook, the Attorney General, will open for the prosecution. Where does Ada's mother live? Do you know Jessie? Mm -hmm. Jessie doesn't know. Jessie doesn't know anything. I do. It's a pleasant enough cottage, but in the back of beyond. She's going to take me there one time. Can I lick the spoon when you finish that, Cook? Mm. I'm the first handmaiden ever to see the collection. Not to go there. They've all been there. But to see the collection... Oh, well, that'll be nice. What's a handmaiden when it's his own? Oh, nothing really. Just something. Round and round, regular. That's it. Draws the tide, so shall thy shining light bring radiance to this flora, Mary Carmichael, thy seventh handmaiden, and give her pure and perfect sight. And so, and so we, we pray. pray. Well, we've got a lot to get through. I'm going to cure your eyes. My lords, members of the jury, foul treasons have been unearthed. Though no torture was used to find them out, and there has been no rigorous usage of the prisoners. Oh, Two foul conspiracies have come to light and have become known since their discovery as the main plot and the by. Many men, all with cause to be grateful to their country, have confessed that they conspired together to kill the king at Southampton and all his issue. These evil men received from Spain vast sums of gold, which they spent freely to further their awful ends. They plotted to join us in an unholy alliance with our most proclaimed and hated enemy, Spain. I pray you gentlemen to remember that my name was never on that list. This was the treason of the priests, and I am not charged with that. No, you are not. Yet all these treasons are like Samson's foxes. Though their heads were severed, they were joined together at the tails. Because our great and learned king can inspire loyalty in all but the filthiest of Englishmen, these plots have been discovered. But if he were not so great a monarch, if he were indeed a fiend from hell, he is still our king by divine right, and every Englishman owes him allegiance. Religion lies at the foot of this conspiracy. The ambition and greed of Rome has led these unfortunate priests and nobles into their sins. But these plotters must still pay the full penalty for their infamy. They must be punished with the full rigour of the law. For only by example can we ensure the safety of our king, his issue and our country. Mr Attorney, I pray you, to whom and to what end do you speak all this? What has the treason of Markham and these priests to do with me? To whom did you bear malice, Sir Walter? To the royal children? Oh. My lord, that arrow is too wide of the mark. Then I will come closer. I will prove that you are the most notorious, odious traitor that ever came before the bar. Your words cannot condemn me, prove against me any one thing, and I will confess the whole indictment. I will prove it all. You are a monster. You have an English face but a Spanish heart. My innocence is my whole defence. You England, I, and Scotland too. You incited Cobham, he has confessed as much. He planned to cross the seas and obtain money from the King of Spain. Cobham has confessed his guilt. He cannot confess mine. Did the King of Spain offer you 600,000 crowns? An offer long rejected for me to help forward his peace with Elizabeth. Forward the peace? Is it likely... And would the Spanish king deal with Lord Cobham, who is neither statesman nor swordsman? No. No, he needed a rally to further his plans. What 
plans. I pray you come to the point. I tell you that I will prove you the most confident traitor that ever lived. The most vile and execrable traitor that ever was. My Lord Justice, can we return to the point? I say again that I am not here to answer for the treason of the priest. And I say again that I will prove you to be the most notorious of traitors. You speak indiscreetly, barbarously and uncivilly. I want for words to express your viperous treason. I think that you want for words indeed, for you've spoke the same thing half a dozen times. <laughs> you are an odious man and hate it throughout England for your pride. If pride were the issue here, this trial might prove to be a measuring match between you and me. <laughs> Mr. Attorney General, you are matched in wit, if not in pride. I suggest that you bring on your proof. Yeah. 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 Very well, my lord. Yeah. 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 Members of the jury, even in his prison cell, awaiting this trial, that foul Lucifer induced the son of his jailer to conspire with him in an attempt to make Lord Cobham recant his freely given and sanctified confession. Was it evil to beg of Cobham the truth? You have no right to beg the truth nor expect the truth. You led Cobham into treachery. You sent him to Spain to raise money to stir up rebellion in Scotland. Has Cobham said that? He has confessed his treason. His treason is not mine. If Cobham be a traitor, what is that to me? All that he did was at your instigation. You are the rankest traitor in all England. No, no, Mr. Attorney, I am not a traitor. You may call me a traitor at your pleasure, but it ill becomes a man of quality and virtue to do so. Yet I take comfort from your talk. For I have yet to hear you charge me with any act of treason. Sir Walter, Sir Edward speaks out of zeal for his service to the king. And you speak for your life. Be patient on both sides. Thank you, my lord. And now, I would like the jury to hear read the confession of Lord Cobham. The confession is mere hearsay and is spoken in court by Lord Cobham. Uh, lord Cobham cannot be with us today, Sir Walter. So we must make do as best we can. Read the document, Sergeant Heal. This verbatim report was taken from Lord Cobham on the 20th day of July in this year of grace, 1603. I confess that I tried to procure 600,000 crowns from Spain and that I agreed to speak with Sir Walter Raleigh about the distribution of this money among those people in England most known to be discontented. I entered into this course at the instigation of my friend Walter Raleigh and against my own will. Raleigh would never leave me alone till I agreed. Oh. Raleigh would never leave me alone. Gentlemen, this is absolutely all the evidence that can be brought against me. Poor shifts these. That document must condemn me or give me back my life, free me or sent my wife and child to beg upon the streets, for that document is all they have. Cobham swears that for months you have been his confederate. Let it be proved. It were better that you fall down to your knees and confess your treasons. My lord, I claim to have my accuser brought to meet me face to face. Sir Walter accuses us that we have no witness against him, but we have no need of even one. For if a man accuses another, and in that accusation condemns himself, then that accusation is more forcible than many witnesses. Our law presumes that a man will not accuse himself in order to accuse another. Whose law? Remember, I beseech you, the statute laid down by King Edward VI, which says that no man can be accused of treason unless he be accused by two lawful accusers. And in the sixth statute that those persons must be brought before the party accused and in public if they are living. Lord Cobham is alive, here in Winchester and in this very building. I demand that he accuse me to my face. These statutes were found to be inconvenient and have been repealed. You are tried now by the common law and one witness is sufficient to condemn you. I want but one witness, Lord Cobham. If he will accuse me to my face, I will confess the whole indictment. I marvel, Sir Walter, that a man of your wit and experience should so labour at this point. Many horse stealers would go uncharged if they could not be condemned without witnesses. My lord, I am charged with treason, 
And even under common law, the trial of treason is by jury and witnesses. No, 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 Sir Walter. Trial by common law is by examination. If three conspire to treason and three confess it, they may all be condemned. Yet there is no witness. I know not, my lord, how you conceive the law. We do not conceive the law. We know the law. Well, let it be. And now we come to the words, destroy the king and all his cubs. You tell me Lord Cobham has accused me. All this talk means nothing. Let him be brought. You speak out of turn. Let me speak for my life. It can do no harm to have Cobham brought. He dare not excuse me. To acquit his old friend, he may speak other than the truth. Surely he will, if brought, revenge himself upon me, for I, I know him to be the most revengeful man alive. He is your partner in crime and may not come. The law will not allow it. My Lord Justice, a confession dictated under we know not what circumstances can condemn me. Is that the law? That is my ruling. Without a witness, a document... Is evidence against me? I have said so. Then, without witness, this letter must be read for me. Huh? What letter? By a trick and using poor George Harvey, I wrote to Lord Cobham. This is his reply. He confesses that the letter was obtained by a trick. But freely written. If the letter is in Lord Cobham's hand... It should be read. By Lord Justice, he may acquit himself. Mar not a good cause. Sir Edward, you are more peremptory than honest. Now I will show you what to do. Sir Walter, give me the letter. It is Cobham's hand. With the court's permission, I will read it. Proceed. Now that our trials draw near, and not knowing who will be first... To clear my conscience and free myself from the cry of your blood, I swear upon my soul that I never had confidence in any treason with you, Sir Walter. I have accused you in my anger, provoked by a trick, when I know that you are as innocent of treason as any man living. Before God, I am now innocent of your blood, and God will deal with me as I deserve and have mercy on my soul. Why has Lord Cobham forsworn himself on his soul? If that letter is not the truth. Now have done. The crown must speak the last. Now. Now, Sir Walter, I will lay you open for the filthiest traitor that ever was. Now I will bring you down. What lower? <laughs> now I will show the world that there never lived a viler viper on the earth than you. I will show that you have become wholly Spanish, that you are a pensioner of Spain. Here is a letter. Dated this very day with the ink scarce dry. I will read you what Lord Cobham has written. Sir Walter, by a trick, has caused me to withdraw my former truths. Now I am resolved to retract all that he by cunning got from me. The King of Spain agreed to pay Raleigh a pension of 1,500 crowns in return for his services as a spy. Raleigh has already done Spain great service, and in his last letter to me, he urged me to confess nothing and so avoid following Essex to the scaffold. Lord Cobham writ this not ten hours ago and signs it, I swear upon my soul before God and my confessor that what I write here is the whole truth. May God have mercy upon me. How many souls has this man Cobham got? Sir Walter, I fear that you are not so clear a man as you have protested. What say you to this pension? It was offered, but never accepted. My poor estate is proof of that. You should still have revealed the offer to the king. Upon my soul, I am persuaded that Lord Cobham has at last accused you truly. The crown rests. Then I will speak in my defence. No, no, no. You have answered the charges. The Crown must speak the last. I must speak the last word for my life. I must speak the last word for the King. Be patient, Master Attorney. Give him leave to speak. Lord Cecil, I am the King's sworn instrument and I must speak the last. You shall not. Very well. Let him acquit himself. Hey! Speak, Walter. At my first examination, I was asked what I knew of Lord Cobham's journeyings to Spain. I answered, 
Nothing. It is true that I suspected Lord Cobham of keeping intelligence with Spain, as he did through the spy, Lorenzi, in the old Queen's day. I was urged by Lord Cecil to say nothing until a time more favourable came to expose the matter. For this reason, and for friendship, I kept my counsel. But it would be strange for me to send Cobham to Spain to persuade the king there to disburse so much money, Cobham being a violent man of few friends and already suspected. Oh, I was not so bare of sense, but to see that if ever our island state was strong, it were now. We have the Kingdom of Scotland united under a royal steward. Ireland is quiet, Denmark an ally which was once our foe, and instead of a lady whom time had surprised, we have an active king, her lawful successor. For me, at this time, to make myself a Robin Hood, a Wat Tyler, a Ket, or a Jack Cade, I was not so mad. The state of Spain is also known to me. I know that six times we have repulsed his forces, thrice in Ireland and thrice at sea. Three times I have served against Spain at sea and am his hated enemy. I have expended of my own money 200,000 crown in buying ships and armour. And to show I am not Spanish, as this court would term me, I am at this moment writing a treatise for the king on the present state of Spain, giving reasons against that peace. For my friendship for Lord Cobham, this was only in matters of private estate about which he communicated and I gave my advice. As for knowing that he conspired with Spain and against the king, I confess before God that I am as clear of this as any man here present. Sir Walter, you say that Spain is poor. It were better for you not to be so well acquainted with the affairs of Spain. Yeah. Poor rejoinder to a good speech, that. Give the traitor his due, Robbie. He's a pretty turn of phrase. I wished. The jury will consider their verdict. It comes to my mind, Sir Walter, why you may not meet your accuser face to face. Lord Cobham has shown himself to be a man easily swayed from the truth and liable to retract his former opinions. So confusing a witness might have marred the attorney's case against you. <laughs> oh, these lawyers will acquit the villain yet, Robbie. Lord Cecil was hot to help him, did you not think? Oh, not that he can mind. The jury have their instructions and they'll not dare go against them. Hey, have you thought of a grand title to go with your grand new estate, Robbie? <laughs> There's a few free at the moment, you know, Somerset, Salisbury and Rochester, to name but three. I don't, never mind. They're ready with a verdict. Have you reached your verdict? We have, my lord. Do you find the prisoner guilty? We do, my lord. Oh, say! And may God have That's... mercy upon us. What's that? A fellow's insolent. Did you hear that, Robbie? Sir Walter Raleigh, you have been found guilty of high treason. My lord... I understand that the jury must do as they have been directed, and I forgive them. I desire that the king should know of the wrongs done me since I came to this place. You have had no wrong. Then I submit myself to the king's mercy, knowing that mercy to be greater than my offence. I recommend my wife and my son of tender years to his compassion for myself. I say no more. At last, the fox is silent. Now the sentence. Listen to it, Robbie. It'll make you think on. <laughs> Sir Walter Raleigh, you stand condemned of heathenish practices and blasphemous opinions. My moral must be plain. Now for my judgment. You shall be taken from hence to the place from whence you came 
there to remain until the hour of your execution. You shall be drawn through the streets on the hurdle to the place of execution and there hanged. Your body will be cut down alive and opened, your heart and bowels cut out, and your privy members cut off and thrown into the fire before your eyes. Then your head will be struck off and your body divided into four parts to be disposed of at the king's direction. And may God have mercy on your soul. You shall receive, my dear Bess, my last words in this letter. My love I send you that you may keep it after I am gone. My advice for you to remember after I am no more in this world to tender it. Since it is the will of God that I shall never see you again, bear my destruction lightly and with a strong heart. By your own efforts you must seek to help your miserable fortunes and those of poor what? Your mourning can avail me nothing that am but dust. My greatest sorrow is that being surprised by death, I can leave no better estate. But if you can live free from want, want no more. All else is vanity. Teach our son to love God, and God will be a father to him and a husband to you. As for me, I am no longer yours, nor you mine, for death has divided me from you and from the world. I cannot write more, for I have stolen this time when all others are asleep. It is time to separate my thoughts from my body. Time and death call me away. My true wife, farewell. Bless my poor boy for me. Written with the dying hand of your sometime husband, now alas overthrown. Yours that was, but now not even my own, W. Raddy. Here, what? Keep this letter in memory of your father's folly. My father was a great man. Oh, get behind me, mother. I have father's sword. If it's Carr's men again, I'll kill them all. No, what? Oh. Quickly, what? The door. God save you both. Am I the first with the news? Her water's death. He lives. What? The execution has been postponed indefinitely, oh. and he is to lodge in the tower at the king's pleasure. Oh. He bids you join him there and bring comfort. James pardoned him, but how? Cecil advised him. They took him to the scaffold, and when he would not confess to treason, they reprieved him there. Oh. The crowd went wild with joy. Oh. The king has done himself more good with this reprieve than with a hundred executions. Your news saves my life as surely as a pardon saved my husband's. He begs for warm clothes and pens and ink. Oh, I'll pack at once. His father really safe? As he ever was, Master Watt. But the price was Sherborne. Your father has made it over to the king, who will no doubt present it to Robbie Carr. When you live here tonight, it will be forever. The price is trifling if it makes my father safe. We will lodge with him in the tower. How will he occupy himself in prison? With writing, a history of the world and England's place in it. Then he will need us by him. You to recall the facts, and I to make sure he takes his rightful place. He is too modest a man. I enjoyed reading your history. The king was not impressed. And you were 12 years in the tower. 12 years, Will. Not unhappy years. The Spaniards grumbled and threatened at my being alive, but every year that passed, it became more impossible for the king to satisfy them. But why? You were condemned. My history was popular, and it was ludicrous that Spain demanded my head when I stood condemned as their agent. And the people soon heard of my trial, or lack of one. And when I walked on the tower ramparts for my daily exercise, there was each day a crowd to cheer me. I had Bess, young Watt, and finally the Prince of Wales. Henry became your true friend. Watt told me of it. With Henry supporting me, James was even more afraid. Afraid that the Prince would lead an army and depose his father. He could have, too. He's a fine Prince, and more popular than his father ever could be. And my father? I thought he, too, was working towards my ultimate release. Thought? Yes. But now, these papers from St. Tome, in your father's hand, Will, he betrayed us, no doubt, hoping that I would be the one not to return. But he let me come with you. It could be I, not what, buried in St. Tome. He couldn't refuse without arousing suspicion. 
Prince Henry was forbidden. But you... It would have been unnatural for you to have stayed at home. What will you do? Send these documents straight to Prince Henry. He will know how to use them. You can trust him. After three years away... With my life. England will... Tomorrow, you'll stand on English soil again. Steady, lads. Stop again. Your balls. Make fast. Well, here we are. Home at last, Will. Take my arm, sir. And I've got a reception, I see. It's my cousin, Stukely. Sir Walter Raleigh, I arrest you in the King's name. I expected this. I thank you, cousin. A fine welcome. Walter, they sent me as your friend. Come to your quarters. There's news. Well, see to my baggage, and then join us. Aye, aye, sir. I'm ready, cousin. Thank you, Sir Walter. Guard, forward. They don't want you in London, Walter. They want you to escape to France. That's why they sent me. Then why am I arrested? The king has no choice. Spain is demanding your head. The alliance is already broken. James must mend it, and this time he will not let you linger. If you go back to London with me, execution is certain. On what grounds? The Spaniards claim that your expedition was an act of war. James pleads that you had orders to provoke no violence, that you acted against his commands, and promises that you will be punished. There were more English sailors murdered before the destiny even reached Guyana, and there were Spaniards killed on the whole expedition. James says that his orders were for you to kill no Spaniards. None, Walter. My men were murdered on the islands. I took no revenge. St. Tom was sacked and burned against my instructions after a treacherous assault on my land forces. My own son was slain. Well, if it's not lawful for an Englishman to repel force with force, they're no miserable England. The Spaniards claim that the whole expedition was a history of unprovoked attacks upon innocent and unarmed colonists. If other pirates can sail to Honduras, burn towns, kill Spaniards, and suffer no reproaches, they're no miserable Sir Walter Raleigh. The king will not listen. Keems led the expedition inland. I was sick aboard the Destiny. Keems is dead. He killed himself in the face of my anger. The king will claim you murdered him to conceal the truth. Cousin, I was betrayed before the destiny left Plymouth and have the proof. When these papers reach Prince Henry, there'll be no question, but I'm the victim of treachery, not the traitor. Prince Henry died eight months ago. What? Some say the plague, some that he was poisoned. He cannot help you now. I have a boat and a trusted crew. Go to France. Bess will join you there. No one will try to hinder you. The prince is dead. Yes. You have no friends left. But I... I have my proof. These letters, written by Cecil to betray me. The king's commission representative. At my new trial, they must acquit me. If they bring you to trial on a charge of treason against Spain, there will be revolution in the land. Well, without a trial, I'm safe anyway. So... Keep your boat, cousin. I will go to London. Robert. Who came? Yes, Walter. Are you well? For an old man. You asked for me. I'm here. Robert, I know that you betrayed me. Will has told me. Then you know of the proofs. If I'm tried, Robert, I must destroy you. Will told me that also. 
You were a fool to come back, Walter. You could have turned pilot, gone to France. They had money for you there. I'm old and sick, Robert. I want to die in England. You will have your wish. But in my bed, Robert, and free. The king will not allow it. He would never dare. To set you free would mean war with Spain. Had you brought back gold, well and good. But tobacco. Very well, Robert. Bring me to trial. This time I'm well prepared. Walter, you will have no trial. What? Has James screwed his Presbyterian conscience to the point of murder? No, I, I don't believe it. Walter, I am here to tell you the decision of the Privy Council. Some 15 years ago, you were convicted in an English court by an English jury of high treason. Because you had been a great statesman and soldier, a star at whom the world had gazed, the king, in his wisdom and mercy, postponed the sentence passed upon you so many years ago. But even stars must fall when they trouble the heavens. Now it is his majesty's pleasure to call for an order of execution under that former judgment. But, Robert, since that judgment I've been granted a royal commission with, with power over the lives and deaths of others. Well, I must have discharged the former judgment. There was no mention of a pardon in that commission. Is this the law? Yes, to be called to execution in cold blood without even a hearing. You think it hard, but not so. New offences have stirred His Majesty to revive that order of execution formally cast upon you. I know that you are wise and valiant. Keep those virtues. Execution is set for early tomorrow morning. Oh, hello. They are pelting the builders with rocks. Oh, what builders, Barbara? Oh, they're making enough for our, sir. Haven't you noticed? Yeah, very considerate of them to put it where you can keep an eye on it. You seem happy, Barbara. Happy as most days, sir. But insensitive. What's the good of being sensitive, sir? Plenty of time for weeping tomorrow. And plenty to weep about, I dare say. But until then, time is all yours, sir. It's all you have. And it's up to me to help it pass easy for you. I think perhaps I have the easier time ahead. Yeah, after tomorrow I agree with you. But tomorrow will be a hard day. And there's an order that's always good for tired soldiers. You must have heard it, sir. Swagger, gentlemen, swagger. Thank you, Parker. I forgot. Well, Robert... I've brought a priest. You have more need of him than I. Good day to your father. Good day, my son. Walter, I have prevailed upon the king to be content with your head. Your wife may have your body for disposal. You see, sir, the king is merciful. Will you be there in the morning, Robert? It should be a good crowd. I will rise early to be sure of a place. Ah, you must. I can rest easy, for my place is certain. Goodbye, Walter. Barbara, I have an errand for you. I want my finest clothes. Not gaudy, but rich. Uh, my tawny satin doublet, black taffeta breeches, and my long gown of black velvet, and a skull cap to wear under my hat for fear I take a chill. If I begin to shiver, it must not be thought that I shake with fright. But your enemies will take exception if you carry off your death with too great a show of bravery. These preparations are my last touch of mirth in this world, priest. When the time comes for parting, I will be grave enough. Ah, finished, Barbara? Almost, sir. Though it seems to be a fool's game to take such pain to the air when the head will soon be off. <laughs> This frivolity lacks respect for both your king and your god. Sir Priest, death is but an opinion and an imagining. I have never feared it. And I promise you I would rather die on the scaffold than of a raging fever. Confess your guilt and die with the king's blessing. 
Why speak of the king when I'm about to go before the king of kings? You take a great deal for granted. What? Have I no hope of salvation? Beware that this levity does not spring from vain glory and pride. Your last hour should be spent in prayer, not personal adornment. If my soul is damned, a handful of prayers at this stage of the game will not save it. I'll give these last few hours to my friends on earth and eternity to my friends in heaven. Oh, leave me, priest. Um, shall I return with the sacrament? At daybreak, it'll serve for my breakfast. Oh, blasphemy. I'm afraid you shocked him, sir. Ah, it was a kindness. He can pray for my soul all night, and in the morning when I repent, he'll think himself no end of a fellow. There you are, sir. Pretty as a picture. Here, now, if you'll excuse, I'll fetch your clothes and then keep an eye on the builders. Can't trust workmen these days, you know. Ah, uh, thank you, Barbara. Uh, and if I may, sir, I'd like a place on the scaffold. Why? <laughs> From there I can pick out your enemies. Most of them will find themselves in your place sooner or later. And I'll enjoy making them look ridiculous behind their backs, so to speak. You shall be at my side, Barbara. Thank you, sir. What do you want? A big pardon, sir, but my orders are that you're not to be left alone. Thank you for seeking to protect me from a self-inflicted damnation. But you've no cause to worry. Why should I trouble to send myself to hell when at the state's expense I shall be transported into heaven in the morning? Move along there. Places on the scaffold of a friend to the traitor. Move along. Hey, where do you think you're going? I'm the last friend he ever made. His barber. Then you'll soon be out of a job. Exactly. My reward for being deprived is a place at his side. So let me pass. It's a good crowd, Will. Hostile, father. Well, they're a savage-looking lot. And sullen. I suppose patience doesn't breed life. Patience, father? They're waiting for a word. And a leader. For what? Revolution. None of the English like the Scotsman. And now the Scotsman kills the greatest living Englishman. Raleigh is the first man ever to be condemned for being a friend of Spain and then executed for being her enemy. Crowns have followed lesser heads than Raleigh's into the pit. But not in England, father. There's always a first time. I hope I'll not live to see it, but you may. And today, if Raleigh wants to live, he has but to raise his arms. And will he? Good morning, Sir Edward. I said, will he? Can England afford a revolution? Certainly not. That's your answer. Raleigh lived for England. He will die for England. All the same, he must not be allowed to speak. If you try to stop him, the crowd will tear you apart. Mm. They're an ugly lot. Look, father. Here he comes. A good crowd, eh, priest? And happy to see me. Or happy to see you die. <laughs> I see they've called out the garrison. There's talk of revolution. The king is afraid. Well, he has no need to be. The English love a good execution. They won't deprive themselves of this one merely for love of me. God bless you, Sir Walter. And you, old man. What brings you to risk your years on so cold a morning? I served on your jury at Winchester, sir. I've come to ask forgiveness and to pray for you. Ah, oh, you have no need of forgiveness. But I thank you for your prayers. Here, Take my hat to warm your pit. Oh, no, sir. You have more need of it than I. I've brought a beaker of mulled wine to warm you on your way, Sir Walter. A happy thought. I thank you. Is it a good drink? It would be better if a man might tarry over it. Oh. <laughs> My 
My good friends who have come to see me die, well, I beg you to bear with me. First, I thank God that he has brought me into the light to die, and that my fever has not made me shake. To call God as a witness to a falsehood at this time would be a grievous fault and rob me of all hope of salvation. I therefore call God to witness that I did never entertain any conspiracy against my king, nor plot against him, nor have intelligence of any plot. Now, it is not for me a subject of death to fear or flatter or speak false in hope of earthly favours. I never in all my life thought evil against the king and urge you all to use me as an example. Now pray with me that God, whom I have offended, will forgive me. Amen. So. I take my leave at peace with God. I regret I must leave this company, but I have a long journey to make. But no, do not weep for me. All life is but a wandering to find a home. Well, I'm ready, executioner. Let me feel if your axe is sharp enough. Here you are, sir. Oh. <laughs> this is sharp medicine that will cure all my diseases. With all my heart, I forgive you for what you have to do. Thank you, sir. When I stretch out my hands, dispatch me. No blindfold, sir. Do you think I fear the shadow of the axe more than the axe itself? You should kneel to face the east, Sir Walter, in honor of our Lord's arising. If the heart is right, Father, it doesn't matter which way the head lies. Ready, Executioner. Now! Strike, man! What are you afraid of? Strike! Oh. Oh. This was the head of a traitor! We have not such another to cut off. Cheer up, friend. He was a bigger villain than most of us, lived longer and saw more than we're ever likely to. You stick to your trade of the axe and I'll stick to my barbering. And between us, we'll doctor bigger brains than his. Even such is time that takes in trust our youth, our joys, are all we have and pays us but with earth and dust who in the dark and silent grave, when we have wandered all our ways, shuts up the story of our days. But from this earth, this grave, this dust, my God shall raise me up, I trust. The Murder of Walter Raleigh was written by Ian Cullen, and produced and directed by Christopher Venning. You had Bernard Archett as Sir Walter, Kathleen Michael as his wife, Robert Trotter as James I, and John Rowe as Sir Robert Cecil. Sir Edward Cook was played by Vernon Joyner, Captain Keems by Basil Moss, George Harvey by David Horovich, Henry, Prince of Wales by Michael Cochrane, Will Cecil by Christopher Good, Watt Rally by Nigel Bradshaw, Watt as a Young Boy by Gene Rogers, and Chief Justice Popham by Carlton Hobbs. Other parts were played by Drew Wood, Kevin Brennan, Christopher Masters, Esmond Redoubt, and members of the cast. <laughs>